I have one you clicked on. It's in a long discussion, and uh, we are now uh, presenting the uh, winter forecast for you. The official winter forecast is now being uh, uh, issued for you today. I will have it uh, later this morning. Uh, the text part, it's going to be two parts, actually. The first part is kind of a general overview, um, uh, general generalizations of each region. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to break it down even a little bit more in depth. Uh, month to month and uh, region to region. Um, so you're going to kind of get two separate parts here uh, for today and tomorrow. You're only going to get one video, um, but you're going to get two parts of it uh, as far as the text goes, so keep in mind of that. Um, so before you start asking a lot of questions about it and everything, you may want to wait till after tomorrow to see the next part. It might answer some of your questions. Uh, not like I don't want to answer your questions, but you know, still feel free to you know, email me anything. Uh, anyway, um, we are looking at uh, temperature-wise. Now, I just want to point out here, uh, again, this is a tough call in here. Uh, I see a dry, but I could also see some cold, chillier air bleeding at times uh, from the north into this region. And that's why I don't have plus fours or plus fives showing up in this region in here because of that uh, reasoning. Also, same deal in here. We may start out the season like December above normal in a lot of these places, and that cuts into the departures and not having it three months in a row of below normal temperatures. But I do feel by February that these places are pretty cold. And you're going to see that tomorrow in the month to month breakdown to get a better idea. So even though it may not look that cold, it's going to be feel much colder than it was last year. We're going to use more fuel uh, in the east this year than we did last year. And we're going to have to bring out the shovels a lot more um, than we did last year as well, uh, especially around Philadelphia where they only had, what, four inches of snow total for the season? Unbelievable. Uh, winter season uh, precip, there it is, below normal, pretty confident in that. This is variable, but I do feel that at least precip-wise, the clippers will just not amount to a whole lot across these areas, and you miss out on the southern branch moisture that will go in across this area. This could be extended westward depending on where that southern branch sets up. Uh, right now, there's been some signs that it starts out in here and then really gets going up into here. So, um, uh, European, uh, this is from, uh, actually, this is uh, the wrong one here that I wanted to show you. This is the one I wanted to show you. In any case, this is the wrong months here. It should be, I should have had December, January, February, but it showed similar things where it had more blocking in here and uh, you had the lower heights in here, higher heights in here. Uh, had this still in here. Uh, this was the uh, update that was out in August, uh, but then uh, September came around and it flipped around uh, the entire pattern here. Lower heights over Greenland, higher heights in here, kind of a, more of a positive NAO, less blocking look, but you still had this signal strong out here. Now, it doesn't mean that the ridge is going to set up in here, the axis. It might set up here, the mean axis, and that makes a difference in the world because I think that what that means is this entire area will be dry in here, uh, and your clipper systems, your polar jet will be farther east, and that will strengthen and take some time during the mid-season for that to happen, and then eventually we'll start seeing it hooking up with the uh, subtropical jet, which will be probably pretty far south, in my opinion, and that's when we start getting the action going here. This will slow down systems if this blocks up in the uh, central Atlantic. We don't have the block in the northern, so that's kind of prevents, prevents having blockbuster storms, but we could have some pretty heavy ones and some changeover events that take place across New England. Now, remember, these water temperatures are running warmer than normal. You don't have to have a strong block um, to get cyclogenesis taking place here and throw back some snow. But what that means is, is that you may not get the cold to stay in, and we could have quite a few changeover systems in the New England states. Still averaging above normal snowfall, but um, a lot of systems may uh, go from snow to rain in these areas, so keep that in mind. Um, this is the long patch. When you, when you take all the... Uh, and so years that we had and everything that was in my analog package that you saw on the site you take all that stuff together um, that's what you get for an average and you can see it was much warmer in the uh, um, in the plain states and that's the the, the area that I'm a little concerned about because I'm going to show you why in a second um, this is the shorter package that I narrowed it down and this is what I've come up with and you can see it's, it is much colder than what I have 
uh, up across the north. So that is a little bit of concern that we have to watch. If December is colder, then I think we'll have to lower temperatures down overall uh, for the three-month span. Now, this is the weak, scenario, weak El Nino scenario. You can see below normal temperatures over the northern plain states into the southeast. Um, that's the weak scenario here. I think what you're seeing here is a jet that polar jet that's farther south um, than what you would see in a moderate to strong El Nino with the ridge popping up so far uh, into western Canada. Here it is, the uh, moderate uh, El Nino uh, outcome for the winter season is much warmer. And that's why we're, our confidence levels are a little bit lower across this area until what's going to take place. We're going to have to base it mostly on the signal. And that's what I've done. Even though we're going to have a weak El Nino, which would favor this, uh, the signals for the uh, po uh, the PNA and the NAO um, favor more of this than the other solutions. So um, I lean towards the look of the moderate El Nino, but I still feel it's a weak El Nino and a weakening El Nino, and that's the reason the signal is weakening, and it may not be the basis of what we're looking at for the winter season. Um, so that's all I had for as far as time for this. Um, again, a lot of this will be all uh, set in. More of it will be uh, mentioned uh, in the uh, winter forecast that will be coming out to you later this morning. That is it for today. We'll see you again next week.